All right, so we're going to continue working on the MSI 1080 Ti, the one I did a video on yesterday. I could not wait until Tuesday to continue working on it. Today is Monday. It's a holiday here in the U.S., but I came down to see if I can figure it out and possibly do a part two on this repair. Now, based on the last video that we did on this card, all voltage rails are present. We have 12 volts on all three areas, one for the left connector, right connector, and uh, 12 volt on the base here. We have 5 volts, we have 1.8 volts, we have 3.3 volts. Now, I did mention if we test our VRAM coil here, we should be getting 0 0.7, but rather we are getting 0 0.869. So, this is an indication that the card is not being detected by the motherboard. If we test our PAX rail, we have 1 volt, which is good. Now, if you remember, if you recall, when we inspected the board under a thermal cam, we noticed a heat spot on the bottom. And I told you that heat spot is coming from back of the board. We inspected the board under the microscope and we found a blown chip. We changed that chip. And now we're going to measure this board again under a thermal cam and see if we still have any heat spots on the board other than the GPU. Okay, so right now if we inspect under our thermal camera again, we're not seeing that heat spot on back of the board no more. The one where we replaced the IC. No heat spot anymore. Right now, the only heat spot I see is the memory, VMAN, on top. Look at this. Right there on top. So we may have a problem with VMAN. Right now, our PEX rail is working. No heat spots anywhere on the board, except for VMAM on top. So that's what I will be looking at right now. And hopefully we can get down to the bottom of this. Some people left a comment suggesting that we look at resistors on the back or capacitors. None of those are a problem. I'll show you why. Like now, if you look at this resistor, you may think it has a hole in it because of the way the light is shining on it, but it's good. It's perfectly fine. Look at this. If I tilt the board, we get rid of that shine. Then you can tell that all those components are good. They do not have holes in them, like some wrote in the comments. And I tested all those capacitors. We do not have a short anywhere on here. I tested the resistors also. We do not know the value of those resistors, but we want to make sure we're not getting a uh, value in the mega ohms or OL. We can start by testing this one here, and uh, we get 4K, 4K, and this one is 1 ohm. So we noticed a heat spot on VMAM. Let's take a look at VMAM and see what's going on. Those are the inductors that got hot, and they are controlled by those two MOSFETs here. If we test the resistance, 70 ohms and 70 ohms the reading seems to be very low on the gate i mean right now i do not want to go into this rabbit hole where it's a never-ending repair we want to finish this repair whether it's a fix or no fix so without wasting too much time let's just get rid of those mosfets and see if anything changes we are dealing with a very thick board and big mosfets so the board has to get saturated with heat for solder to liquefy and for us to be able to remove the chips. So MOSFET number one is out. And you know what, while MOSFET number one is out, let me just test resistance quick. And we have 12K. <laughs> we have 12K. And the second one, we have 12K also. Okay, I have a donor board right here, and we can extract the chip from this donor board.
right and we're gonna go back to the customer's board here and solder that MOSFET and the MOSFET should go like this So let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. Power on. And while at it, since I'm very optimistic, why not put the HDMI cable? Are we gonna get six beeps? And yes, we have six beeps. And we still have heat on the top. What if we get rid of this second MOSFET? I mean, right now it's very possible that our GPU is fried since we are having a problem with this part of the board. It's a direct connection from here to the GPU. And if we measure resistance now, same value. So the MOSFET is likely good. Right now what I want to do is inject voltage before putting that MOSFET back. I mean, I knew that MOSFET was good, but I just wanted to take it out and see if anything changes as far as the measurements go. But it's the same, so the MOSFET is good. The first one is not good. The first MOSFET is not good, and that's how probably the board went bad. A bad MOSFET on the VMEM area can kill the GPU. What I want to do is inject maybe 0 0.8 volts. So we're going to be using this tool here, the short injection tool. We can control both voltage and amperage. I currently have it set at 0 0.8 volts and as for current, we currently have it set at 4 amps. Usually I use the mechanic short killer, which I love because it's battery operated. But in this case, I want to go down as low as 0 0.8 volts. So I use this device here. You can find this on our website if you're interested. Let's inject 0 0.8 volts right here and just monitor the board under a thermal cam and see what happens. So if we play 0 0.8 volts at the gate, nothing happens, of course. Nothing happens. If we go here, then the device will draw 2.1 amps. But I'm not seeing anything hot on the board. Let me bump up voltage to 1. Yeah, GPU is getting warm. As soon as I hit the probe, the GPU is getting warm from the right side. The reason I'm not showing you the thermal cam on the screen is because the cable went bad. The cable that connects the thermal cam with the mixer, with the switcher. Let me show you. You see? It went bad, so I need to buy another cable. Some people asked in the comments, would you still charge a repair tent fee if the customer told you to just keep the card? 
you'll be surprised how many customers they pay you for the repair time fee because they appreciate your time and they also tell you to keep the card so you can use it for parts. I would say maybe more than 70% of customers, they still pay you the repair time fee because they know that you spend time on it and they tell you to keep their non-fixable device. So on this card, I spent some time working on it. The next time I get a similar card, I'm very aware of what's going on on that board. So now the next time I get the same video card, I have a lot of experience working on this card. I spent a lot of time on this card now, but in the future, I'm not going to spend as much time because I'm aware of what components are on the board and where they are located. And I'm aware of the numbers, the readings on this board. And that's how experience develops. Because some people ask, how do you know that this component should measure like this? How do you know the resistance reading on this component? How do you know the voltage reading of that component? Trial and error. Trial and error. So that's it. We're going to deem this board a no fix. We're going to let the customer know and mail it back to him. Let me know what you think. And I will see you again in the next video.